Well, at long last, it is the start of the new season. Our first in the top flight since uh, we started our career, having got promoted last season, of course. Um, it's been a very busy winter, so there's a lot of transfers to get you through. Um, and then we'll have our first league game of the season against Tromsø. So, let's go. Right then, transfers. It has been, like I said, a busy one. Uh, now, uh, of the ones who've left, the only one I really cared about was Aaron Jonsson, who had the potential to be quite decent, um, and I let his contract run down a bit. He got all bent out of shape because we hadn't offered him one. HJK came in, we tried to offer him one. He chose them. Fine, whatever. <clears throat> Enough about the outs. It's the ins we want to see, isn't it? Now, as I very often do, <laughs> I'd done basically all my business before the transfer window even opened. So we just had a busload of people arrive on the 9th of January. Now, let's have a look at them. Now, Rilwan Hassan here is a left winger. Uh, can play. He's going to play that inside forward um, thing. And he's 32, so he's not going to be here for long, I wouldn't have thought. But he is just that little bit better, and he's basically pushed Board thinner, just just aside. But Board's still hanging around. He's had a good preseason. So Rilwan Hassan, uh, free signing as well, as was Bjorn Sigurdarsson, who again is 32, and he is my first choice forward. We're switching from a target man to a deep lying forward this season. Um, actually, last point, I need to give you a quick rundown of the tactics and why they've changed. Um, but we'll do that after the transfers. So Sigurd Arsson, first choice striker now. Um, again, won't be for too long. Actually, Icelandic international and has scored an international goal. Right, another freebie. Gonzalo Jacque, 26-year-old Argentinian. Right back. Uh, yeah, basically should be first choice. Only. It's a toss-up between him and Krona. Um, and um, I wouldn't mind either of them starting. Jacque is my kind of just about first choice but uh, Krona is still very much in the running now Peter Nossadal who costs 600,000 this is all in Krona by the way so just kind of divide by well roughly 10 it's actually about 11 but divide by 10 for ease of ease of maths um, and uh, yeah this is someone I've signed basically for the second string at the moment who somehow on the last day of the season claimed a promotion place from Division 3 so they're now in Division 2 which is the level below the one we were at last season I don't know if they can get any higher than that but it is a decent level to get our younger players some good experience and playing games and hopefully winning in that division which will be nice uh, yeah no Sadal is certainly one for the future he's got bags of potential uh, again, he's a winger, a left winger, who prefers his right foot, so the inside forward, and of course can play on the right wing perfectly happily as well. I mean, basically, all my wingers need a right foot, because we play an inside forward and a winger. So you need to need to be able to use your right foot if you're going to come here. Not that I'm leftist. Uh, now, this one. This one really upset the fans for some reason, but basically that's because they don't know their arse from their elbow. Uh, now, Matthias Randriamami, Madagascan international, and he's on loan to us at the moment from Paris Saint-Germain of all people. Um, he's got some decent stats, he's only 19, he's got bags of potential and we have an option to buy him, which I'm sorry fans, I am going to be exercising that option because in the future this boy is going to be good. Uh, he has been a little overshadowed by someone else, but we'll get to him. Now, uh, now another youngster, five million we spent on this boy, and he's only in the B team. <laughs> uh, but again, nineteen-year-old German, Mattis Bruns, centre back, uh, six foot four. Pretty good. Lacks a bit of composure, but that's not something we really look at too much for my, my centre backs. Um, so as long as he doesn't get too panicky back there, and you know he's got time to gain experience, and hopefully that will 
that will improve although he seems to be getting worse across the board but again not someone you'll see this season <laughs> there's quite well, a few of them most of the money i spent was on on future ones now what i thought might be a future one but is not is another center back another 19 year old swedish this time casper weidel um and as you know, I think we spent six million on him. He's already worth six to twenty-four million. So if you sell him now, make a profit. He is on quite a bit of money, but he is also worth it. He is basically the best centre back this team has at the moment. He is a beast, and he's only nineteen. Um, I expect to be losing him to international duty at various points, certainly for the uh, Swedish youth sides. Now, Thomas Rechtal, another one you won't see, um, 22 years old, decent central midfielder. He is very close, I think, to being first team quality, actually. If I just cast my eyes over to the side here. Uh, yeah, I mean, as a deep line playmaker, he could almost start. He is really good, but we are quite blessed at deep line playmaker. So at the moment, I'm going to leave him to get some experience in the reserves. Hopefully he can basically guide that team to uh, to glory and another one that you probably won't see um another midfielder Mikhail Maiden um and I can't remember what I bought him to do now uh oh yeah he's more of a sort of like an attacking attacking sort of style midfielder but again a decent youngster with some good potential uh, so that's all the ones who arrived in January and then I was having a bit of a, a look at how good the squad was and it, sort of, it stuck out that our weakest position was goalkeeper. We did not have um, a good goalkeeper really for this level. So <clears throat> I asked the scouts to have a go, have a look out and the first name that come up, came up, <clears throat> terrible English. Uh, was Jasper Torkilson and I'd seen his name before it had come up before when we'd looked for goalkeepers but back then we didn't have a transfer kitty at this point I still had about 40 million of the 50 something million that they'd given me to spend and I still had wages so it was like <clears throat> right well I mean he's valued somewhere between 12 and 20 something million and it's like well if I get him then I can probably sell one of the other ones and Hungerland who was our starter last season you'll, you'll remember um, played almost the entire season apart from the disastrous 5-1 defeat um, when Olsen Pettersen or Olsen Pettersen um, came in but he was coming out as according to my uh, my calculations as the slightly worse of the two not by a lot but slightly worse he's also slightly older and I just sort of put my toe in the water and so I offered him out to see if anyone would come in. Offered him out for five million. We got a bid of 3.75. So I'm sitting there on this bid and I was like, right, okay. We sounded out Torkildson, looked like he was keen to come. We put an offer in and as you can see, I got him at the, the low end. That There's an extra million possibly to come if he becomes international, which I think he will. I think he's already been, um, he's certainly already in the under 19s or under 21s. I think it's the under 21s he's in. Um, and I think this boy, I mean, look at that. That's just, there's so much green on that screen. It's incredible. The boy is an absolute beast. He's six foot six at the age of 19. He's an absolute machine and he is going to be our starting goalkeeper he's down as a backup because weirdly the boy was happy to be a backup i don't know who he thought he was going to back up because he's clearly better than anyone we've got um so yeah and i mean look at that value we've doubled our money on him if we sell him now anyway already and yeah i think hopefully i get the feeling this is going to be someone who in a few seasons time which of course, you probably won't see because this is the beta save and you won't see that far in it. But if I carry it on in a few seasons time, I think he will be stolen from us because one of the big boys of Europe will come calling um, for this lad. 
Yeah, so you can see that he's got 321 caps. Um, so yeah, Jasper Torkelson is my new starting goalkeeper and he is a beast. Um, and 12 million, I mean, that was quite a bit. I mean, obviously in, you know, in football terms, I mean, to be honest, if you were managing like a Premier League or um, championship side in the game, Torkelson would be one to, to try and find. Because you're looking at 1.1, 1.2 million you can probably get him for. And, I mean, just, again, look how good he is. I mean, he is amazingly good. And, um, yeah, that would be dirt cheap if you were a Premier League side. For a 19-year-old that you could probably happily, I mean, he's happy to be a backup for us. But a Premier League side, he's going to happily sit in the reserves or get loaned out you could easily do that so anyway that is all the signings now we have one thing obviously Dingeland is going Phil Scar is on that list because he's not actually officially joining us because it was a two-year loan doesn't officially join us until the end of this year now Ole Didrik Blomberg is the only other bit of transfer news we have and that is because because I've upgraded the squad a bit, at least I think I have, um, and we didn't have room in the squad for everyone who was first team last season, along with the new signings. So Blomberg got pushed down into um, the B team. And he seemed to be absolutely fine with that until it came time to register the squad for the new season, in which case obviously it became official that he wasn't going to be in it. And he kicked up a fuss, said, oh, I'm not sticking around here. I'm not going to sign a new contract. He is out of contract at the end of the season. Um, so I thought, right, well, stuff you. Uh, you're going to sit in the reserves and rot for all I care. Um, if this is your attitude, um, it's certainly not the way to get about getting in the first team. And um, then we just put him up for sale, transfer listed him, and almost immediately Strom's Gosset have come in with 7.25 million bid for him so he is disappearing when the Norwegian transfer window opens again which I think is August-ish or something so yeah he is going now what we need oh good grief right yes I haven't told you about the uh tactics yet have I I think that is about as good as our first team get although I say that actually uh, Hassan is not overly fit now what we do need to do is um, find out who we want on the bench because obviously all season long or all pre-season I've had a bench of 15 players which has been a wonderful luxury but really does not do you any favours when you suddenly have to cut that down to seven. Uh, right, well we definitely want a Hegabo in there. So let's get him in and then... Right, now Vasberg has dropped back a bit because you remember last season he was an attacking midfielder. We don't play one of those anymore. But he's dropped back and is like our backup um, deep line playmaker, I think, now. Mura has shifted to a central midfielder on attack. Um, uh, which is going to shove him up there. And now we need someone who can play out wide. Borsting can play both sides. Is he right footed? He is right footed. Well, there you go. Sounds like you're ideal then, Borsting, doesn't it? Because you can play on both positions without worrying about your feet. Now, moving to the tactics. It's obviously, as you can see, the attacking midfielder has gone. We now have a defensive midfielder. And we are also playing a higher tempo, more direct, counter-attacking game. And the reason for that is quite simple. It's because the board said that's what they wanted. Um, yeah, there we are. Defensively solid, direct, counter-attacking football. I know they don't overly bothered about it and we could have stuck to the old system but change is as good as a rest isn't it 
Uh, right, okay, opposition instructions, blah, blah, blah. Oh, they want us to go positive. I mean, that's the other thing as well. We've, we've switched from positive to just balanced. So we'll see how the season starts. Um, as you can see, pretty much everyone is up with the familiarity. Not necessarily as sharp as I'd have liked. I don't know why the sharpness hasn't been there. Or hasn't been coming. Because um, most of these players have played most of those pre-season games. So they should be getting there by now. But anyway, this is our first game in the top flight with Bram. Uh, right, pump fists. Make sure we win. Trust you to make me proud. Okay. And <laughs> this will be a bit different, boys. Playing in front of fans. There's been about a thousand people here for all of our friendlies. So there's now like 16 or thousand. And I think we'll get pretty well packed houses most of the time. Hanson. Oh, he slips it in. Cornelius Hanson. Oh, well, that's a good start. I'm not quite sure what the defence thought they were doing. They just, oh, he just went round them. And then I slipped it in at the near post. Very disappointed if I was Tromsø. <clears throat> Fortunately, I'm not. Oh, one other thing um, I did want to, to point out, um, or not necessarily point out, but make you aware of, is that at some point over the winter, I got offered a... Um, job interview at Brighton um, which I have to say did intrigue me but of course the point of this beta save is Bran so I didn't want to go and do that but what I have done is saved it at the point they offered that interview oh that was terrible goalkeeping well done um, 12 million well spent um, so yeah so I have um, saved it at the point of that interview so I could go back and maybe at some point do a little sort of series of like you know replacing Potter um, who I presume they've sat because I looked at the, the league table and they were about 11 games from the end and they were in the relegation zone so um, I don't know if maybe they did they maybe never have Graham Potter because obviously he would be at Chelsea when the game came out so I don't know um, not sure. Right, why why have we just let them take charge of this game, boys? Just asking for a friend. Go on, Tor Kilton. There you go. Ooh, throwing it out. Get you. Get you, Fancy Dan. And we've given it away again. Brilliant. Am I going to have to shout at you at half time? I might have to shout at you now. Demand more. It's unacceptable. How is that a corner? He ended it straight wide. Well done, Torkelson. Right, I don't like the fact they've been the better side. I mean, 70% possession. Seriously, boys. Try and get the ball. I know we're playing, you know, counter attacking football. But this is not good enough. That is unacceptable. 30% possession you've managed to have. Don't make me abandon this method of playing football. We're an experiment here. Don't make it go wrong at the first hurdle. Right, several people are playing very badly, aren't they? Right, Hegabo, on you go. Bored, get off. You're having one of your shocking days again. And unfortunately, the goalkeeper is playing like an ass, So that's not helpful. And Moberg's playing badly, but I can't replace him because no one else can play the position. Oh, good. I'm glad you've all chosen today to be absolutely useless. Right, Vasberg, get on for Rash. Right, come on. Sort your lives out. <sighs> Supposed to be favourites for this bloody game. Try and play like it. Oh. 
See, the, the problem is with playing all those really easy teams in pre-season that don't get any idea of how good the tactic actually is working because we're supposed to slaughter people. And now we're losing and it's all going horribly bloody wrong. Demand more. Right. Um, is, is the work the ball in the box not working? I don't know. <clears throat> right, you should know how to play this bloody way. You've done it all last season. <clears throat> yes, confirm changes. I've got 10 minutes for that to take effect. It's not going to happen, is it? <sighs> well, that bright start faded really quickly. And, oh, that was awful. Awful performance. I mean, look at that. We stopped playing after half an hour. Why? Did they make changes that I didn't notice, that nobody said about? Yeah, that was an embarrassing performance. That was shockingly bad. So many of you were rubbish. <sighs> well. So much for top half. That's what we're supposed to get this season. I don't think we'll get it on that basis. Um, I'm not quite sure when we'll be back. Um, possibly never after that result. Uh, no. Well, we will come back at some point. Um, yeah, well, thank you for joining me. Um, it's not been a bright start. Let's hope it picks up. And, uh, yeah, like, comment and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.